Hello, everyone. Everybody, as you're coming in. Hello, everyone. How are you doing? Um, good. So many faces here gathered. And I know so many, though. I see them in such a little square. But I know it's you, Mauricio. We know it's you. We see you. We'll just let a few more moments let everyone in. But we're happy you could make it, so we're excited. Yeah. We see some of you at the office and some of you at home, so that's good. Good to see everyone. And as you know, or many of you know, here at the Pastoral Center, we work some days from home and some days from the office. And today we're starting, we just happen to be, this group happens to be at the office today. Hi, Gloria. Hey. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello, hello. Hi, how are you? Hi, Lizette, how are you? Very good, very good. Good to see you, Mary. Well, hello. From you. <laughs> I think we're ready, uh, Gigi, if you are. So too. Uh, I think so too. I want to welcome everyone to our first accompanying our formation leaders uh, video conference. We, as promised, we will be reviewing the just recently promulgated guidelines for uh, formation programs. I trust that all of you have received them, but at least have heard about them. And if you have not received them, you can access them on the DPM website. They are on the rotator. If you go to uh, rtsa.org, click parish offices, pastoral ministries, it will be there on the front page on the rotator for you to download. So, uh, I'm Gloria Zapian, otherwise known as Gigi, your Secretariat Director for Catechesis and Formation. I want to welcome also Lizette Farias, the Secretariat Director for Christian Community, who will be speaking to marriage and youth ministry and other topics. Just say hi. I um, would also want to welcome all of our parish life liaisons who are joining us today. Ademola, Eliot, Jorge Flores, and Daniel Ubre. And of course, we couldn't have one of these video conference meetings without our chief engineer, Juan Carlos Rodriguez, the Director of Events and Parish Life. And we're also joined today by Joan Martinez, our Department Director for Pastoral Ministries. So Joan, would you like to mention something, say something before we begin? Just a warm hello to everyone. Thank you so much for all that you are doing. We know that this pandemic has forced us uh, out of our comfort zones and it's it's our opportunity uh, in that moment to to think outside the box to look at things differently to create a culture of uh, even more so that's loving serving and caring about uh, those that we regularly engage with those that are new to our ministries and those that are on the periphery so thank you so much for all that you do and uh, I'll turn it back over to you, Lizette. Thank you, thank you. So just a few netiquette items before we begin uh, with our uh, initial prayer. Uh, you are all muted. Uh, if you're not, we ask you to please mute yourself and this is just to avoid any background noise. Uh, what we will do today is we will be reviewing the um, guidelines, uh, formation guidelines for the fall and beyond. And then we will take your questions. We will have a Q&A session. And during this time, if you have a question, we ask you to please raise your virtual hand and then unmute yourself so that we can hear your question. After you have expressed your question, please go back to mute, again, to avoid any background noises. 
Uh, we will have the chat area open, it's open now. So please feel free to post your questions, comments. And when the Q&A session uh, arrives, we will be happy to address those questions that you may have. And before, you know, anything else, we will start with an opening prayer. Uh, I think it's just fitting that we will do our uh, consecration to the Holy Spirit as we begin uh, or continue the planning for what comes ahead. So um, we can pray together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, Holy Spirit, receive the perfect and complete consecration of my whole being. In all my actions, grant me the grace of being my light, my guide, my strength, and the love of my heart. I surrender myself to you, and I ask you for the grace to be faithful to your inspiration. Holy Spirit, transform me through Mary and with Mary into a true image of Christ Jesus for the glory of the Father and the salvation of the world. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, thank you. I think we're ready to begin with the review, Gigi, if you are. Okay. Well, we're going to do a brief review of the whole document. Um, we won't take too long. You have your copies. You can read them. So we won't be reading every word. We're going to spend most of our time actually responding to your questions. So here we go. I'm going to share my screen and we can begin. All right. Well, of course, uh, we know that uh, this unusual, unique situation has precipitated um, what we are in. And let me see, how do I, there it is, okay. Very good. Um, one of the things I just wanted to point out, uh, Bishop Boulette requested that all parishes create a COVID-19 health and safety plan. If that is something that you are not aware of, please talk to your pastor about it. Uh, all pastors received this communication with samples from Bishop Boulet, and that is really critical, actually, going forward in preparing whatever protocols that you have. So I just wanted to uh, make that first, first comment there. As well as the Arsacean policy for ministering to minors is still in effect. And the appendices, which I'm sure you have seen and we will uh, review, talk about different kinds of formats and release forms and additional information that everyone should be aware of. And because these are the extraordinary times, as Joan mentioned, we are called to get past our ordinary comfort zone. We're called to be diligent, flexible, creative, and compassionate all at once as we accompany the people of God. So that's what these guidelines were formulated for to help us all to do that. Uh, baptism preparation is one of those essential functions that needs to continue, that must continue. Uh, because there are adults with very small children often involved, um, the Archdiocese recommends an online assisted format. But as in all of these situations, those who cannot participate for whatever reason need to be accompanied in such a way that they can participate, whether it's by phone, whether it's by dropping off materials, and accompanied in that way. Uh, accompaniment is always key. We can't just post a video and say, okay, just view it and that's enough. That can never be part of how we operate. Um, it's tough enough that we have to meet virtually, 
uh, in so many cases that we can't see our faces even when we are together. So that accompaniment is more important than ever. Reconciliation and Eucharist, another thing which must go on. Sacramental preparation must go on with uh, apologies to, I think it was P.T. Barnum who said the show must go on. Um, uh, one of the things that our bishops have mentioned to us that if it is possible, if it is possible, it's recommended that in-person person sessions take place during the year in which an individual is expected to receive reconciliation, Eucharist, or confirmation. Oftentimes, these are multi-year programs, but in the year where the sacrament is to be received, this request has been made. Again, uh, that is up to, that is the decision of the parents. And in case uh, anyone was not sure and you need to remind parents of this, no sacrament can be received virtually. Okay? Uh, it must be a personal encounter with Christ through the priest. All right. Confirmation prep. Uh, the same things apply as we have said before. Uh, one other thing that is now possible for adult confirmation, there is an online assisted adult confirmation preparation uh, format. And you can see that uh, if you follow the links here. RCIA, again, is also to continue. Uh, it is how we build up the church, and that continues. We, uh, we want to continue to celebrate the rites for those who are able to attend and encourage those who cannot attend for whatever reason to follow them online. But they are to be celebrated in the church as usual with those who are able to attend. Uh, as well as the dismissal with those who are able to attend. We don't have the instructions for the right of election or Easter vigil quite yet, but they will be coming, God knows. Maybe we will be in a different place in the spring of 2021. We all hope and pray for that. And with that, I hand it out over to Joan. I'm, I'm sorry, to Lizette. Yes, thank you, Gigi. Um, if you don't mind sharing, keep sharing the screen for me. Yeah, me too. That's great. Um, so we are in the section now of marriage preparation. I know most of you are um, faith formation directors, coordinators, catechists, or youth ministry. But I know that uh, now, especially in this time of pandemic, a lot of us are wearing different hats. So um, if you hear that there is no marriage preparation, that is not the case. There's always marriage preparation. Marriage is a sacrament and as such, uh, we, we are called to prepare the couples uh, as they need to for the sacrament. So uh, we are working with parishes. So if you hear that there's not a very uh, concrete plan, please reach out to me, uh, you as DREs, as coordinators, or have someone in your parish reach out to me and I'm happy to help, but the instructions are here. Basically, we are saying you can have a variety of options to do marriage preparation. It can be in person, one-on-one -on -one, with a sponsor couple. It can have a, a group meeting uh, with the social distancing requirements, with the wearing of the mask, small groups where we can, you know, socially distance as, as required. Uh, it can be a blended uh, format where uh, couples can do a program online, but have that, like Gigi was mentioning, have that key accompaniment element uh, from the, the pastor, from a couple in the parish, from the deacon maybe in the parish and his wife. Uh, but the, the, the goal here is that no couple uh, goes out without the proper preparation for marriage. Again, this is a sacrament and our families need this preparation so, so much. So we don't wanna dismiss that. So here's a list of um, 
resources that you see there. Um, I have resources myself. If you, if you need samples, we can work together and I can, uh, we can make it happen for your parish. So make, she, make sure to pass on the message if you're, no, if you're not the one for marriage prep, but be sure to pass it on. And then we'll go to section six, which is the religious education programs and the youth ministry um, resources that there are out there for um, uh, religious education in general and then for youth ministry. And we know that the, those sometimes are combined and you're gonna see some samples later on uh, in, in this document. But uh, what we wanna just, if you could, you've already seen it probably, uh, it's a list of resources, there it is. Um, and if you're already a subscriber of one of these resources, you will have access, I'm sure you've been in contact hopefully with the publishers and that they can uh, make anything available that you need online uh, for whatever format you're gonna choose. If you're gonna choose to do uh, hybrid, blended, and we'll look at those options in a minute, but we do want to mention those so that you can see that there are options and there are also free options for, for those that are not subscribed uh, anywhere else. Uh, and the same with youth ministry. I don't know if you wanted to add anything in that um, area of resources, Gigi? Um, not really. Um, these are the publishers that appear in the USCCB website of uh, recommended materials that are been found in conformity, and that is what the Archdiocese has asked us to use. And they can be used in creative ways and other materials can be used as supplements. And there are a lot of other materials out there as well. Excellent. And the last part here is the ongoing formation for adults or late movements. We know that our late movements uh, wanna continue to meet. So what we're saying is that if you are able to meet in person, please do again, uh, considering your COVID, um, safety and health plan for the parish, uh, but encourage other means of, of continuing to reach out through uh, online, podcast, uh, group chats, all of that, all of that is available to us. And I know that late movements and, and adult formation uh, can get very creative. So we encourage that to continue to accompany our, our um, the, the people that we serve. And then you'll see uh, there's our contact information, uh, information, my information, Gigi's information is there for your reference. And then the next part, it's the appendices. Um, so I think you're going to, we'll, we'll cover both, but you can start. Gigi. Right, right. Okay. Uh, so sample formats. These are suggestions. These are not hard and fast that you have to do every single thing that is uh, recommended here. Uh, as we say, they're adjustable, interchangeable, and are there to be adapted to your particular needs and resources. But all that being said, they are, we are to accompany our, uh, our families, and we are to provide formation, okay? And there's many ways in which it can be done. Um, I've been asked a lot about option one, family faith formation at home for situations with little to no internet access at home and catechists not comfortable with technology. Um, this is kind of detailed, and uh, but this is the most, um, how could I say, uh, intensive kind of format for those who have no way to have virtual learning. And one thing that I also wanted to, to mention here, for those who are going to be doing at least partial in-person formation, there's many things that you can do within that. Um, there are some parishes who are having only half of a particular group go in at one time, so to allow for enough social distancing and enough time for cleaning. And then the other half of the group comes the following week. And then that first group does work at home, does formation at home with parents. And so it alternates in this way. So that's a possibility for in-person learning. So again, you can look at that uh, on your own. 
uh, a blended approach is one in which uh, there, this is a, a very common format for most family formation uh, that I have seen uh, from the Sophia Institute, for example, or from others that I have seen that provide family formation. Formation is done with parents and then parents then form their children at home. Uh, and then there's the digital learning uh, using platforms, Flipgrid, Moodle, Google Classroom. I've even seen YouTube channels. Some religious ed programs have their own YouTube channel now. And that is how uh, formation is, is imparted, okay? And you can look through all of that as well. Okay, then in-person gathering with live video access. If you've got some folks that are willing to do that, that's kind of exciting because that's your own program, uh, your own live program that you are doing. Um, it, it, it involves sending materials home, involves equipment, um, and in this case, the youth ministry team. Mm -hmm. I've encroached on your area, Lizette. It's, it's fine. It's good, Gigi. So yes, this, this area, uh, this option four, and as you see, the options four, uh, five, and six are very similar to what Gigi described earlier, but we wanted to place them in, in this uh, area because I think that uh, it does have some uh, nuances specifically to youth ministry in the sense that um, there might be more familiarity from both from the team and the participants in the areas of technology. So we encourage you know, to use technology as much as possible. So if you see um, the first option was like have a live gathering, but uh, also a live streaming of uh, some sort or like Zoom or another platform that you can use for those that are not comfortable coming in, uh, in person. And if you do in person, again, it's just, we go back and, and I, I'm glad that you mentioned it at the beginning, Gigi, that the parish must have a safety and health plan that was requested by Bishop uh, Michael Lay in June. So that's gonna guide your, your um, efforts uh, in, in the ministerial area in your parish. So then you have the other, the, uh, option five uh, with a blended approach, synchronous, asynchronous, and then option six with a family uh, faith formation at home. And, and again, that's key because we still have, uh, we have families that are not comfortable either uh, in person and that don't have, don't have access to um, online learning. So we want to make sure that we accompany them through other means. I know Gigi mentioned telephone, uh, packets, we mentioned packets there, ha creating the packets and then creating the follow up because like uh, Gigi mentioned before, we don't want to post a video and then be like, okay, that's your formation for the month or here's a package that's your formation for the month and don't have that accompaniment. So that's going to be key for, for also for youth ministry and, and for the youth ministers that we have uh, in our parishes to continue to move forward and, and another invitation is that to consider that youth ministry must also go on. Um, we, our youth need us, we know that they're suffering a lot from the disruption that this has brought on them. And I mean, like everybody else, but they're in a special place of their development and of their growth. So I think it's key that we continue our accompaniment of our teams, of our communities. And I think that's the last sample, Gigi, that we right. have there. Right. Um, now we, that was Appendix A. Now we come to Appendix B, which we are asked to put in all our registration forms for religious ed and youth ministry. Um, it's not a hold harmless document, but it is something that says, all right, um, this is something that you should be aware of, okay? So that's Appendix B. And Appendix C is for all programs, all of them, whether they are for youth ministry or for uh, adult formation or for um, religious ed. 
I'm sorry, well, not adult formation because it's for minors. Um, this is the consent form so that minors uh, may participate with parents' permission in online, virtual video conferencing, whatever have you. All right. Okay, Lizette. Yes, the, this last one is a sample, and, and I want to highlight that the word that may be added to a parish COVID-19 health and safety plan. So let's say your parish already has the plan. You can look at this, this Appendix D and see what areas you're not addressing in your safety plan that you want to add or what, um, what items you don't need to add, you know, depending on how uh, the, guide, the guidance of your pastor and your community. So this serves as, as that uh, resource for you to uh, make your guideline more uh, robust, or if you need some samples, you can grab them from here, but it's just that, that uh, a resource for you to build up uh, your plan if necessary. That's right. To give you more detail, to give you more detail. All right. We have gone through it. And at this point, we are ready to take your questions. So as stated before, if you can post your question on the chat and uh, I'll, we'll be looking at that and addressing those, or you can just uh, raise your virtual hand and uh, I'll try to see your hand and you can then unmute yourself and share your question. Where the, we, as you see, we prepared at least half of the conversation for your questions because we want to make sure that you're if this is the only meeting you attend you're ready to go after this meeting with you know of course consultation with your pastor and your team but that from us you've you've uh we've clarified whatever questions that you may have and if we don't have the answer right away we will make sure to get that answer for you Twitter. hi archbishop hello archbishop hello hello, hello. hello. Um, so you, are, you are in a formation session? We're yes. We're looking at the formation guide that we just sent. Oh, out the guide, here. okay. Yes. Well, I wish you all well and may prayer sustain us in hope. Yes. Would you give us your blessing, Archbishop? Sure. The Lord be with you and, and with, your, with spirit. your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son. Amen and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank, Thank you for you. your ministry. Thank you. I, lost. I, I actually was going to share, just since we already had um, Archbishop's blessing, I think that that can be our, our, our uh, closing prayer. But I am sharing our contact information from me and from Gigi. Feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'll be happy to to assist in any way we can. We are past our time. I don't know, Gigi, if you have any final. Thank you to everyone. Thank you very much for being with us. Uh, we might see some of you again in the near future. But if not, we will see you again soon, sometime on Zoom. God bless you and all your plans. You are in our prayers. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. God bless. God bless.